The Kentucky woman accused of shooting her own children in the head gets her trial date pushed back again. We're taking a look at why her attorneys say they need more time. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Tiffany Lucas, the woman accused of murdering her own sons just after Halloween last year, was back in a Kentucky courtroom on Monday. At 32 years old, she allegedly shot six-year-old Maurice Baker Jr. and nine-year-old Jaden Howard back on November 8th, 2023, inside a home in Bullitt County, Kentucky. Really hard case to get through. And what is so eerie and what is so unsettling about this is that there were photos and videos of her and the boys appearing happy. Are you walking? Are y'all shopping? Yeah. Go peanut. Go peanut. Go peanut. Go peanut. Yay. Oh. On the day of the shooting, neighbors reportedly called 911 after hearing gunshots. They claim that Lucas ran outside and said that, quote, the kids were dying. One of the neighbors ran inside the house to try to help, but the injuries were just too devastating. Both boys were rushed to a children's hospital but died. When police got to the scene, Lucas was allegedly lying in her neighbor's driveway. She told the cops that the shooting was an accident. She said someone had given her a gun, but said she would never have done something like this unless someone, quote, manipulated her. And she also said that she was, quote, in such a bad spot. That's reporting according to law enforcement. I actually interviewed Bullitt County Sheriff's Office Chief Deputy Colonel Alex Payne when this first happened, and he didn't know all the details, but he told me something very chilling. I can tell you this, the boys were shot in an area that would not be survivable for anybody. Um, However, they were alive, uh, to the best of our knowledge, when they were transported by EMS to the hospital uh, and, uh, and passed away while at the hospital. The last time we saw Miss Lucas was in January for her arraignment, where she entered a not guilty plea to two counts of capital murder. The judge wanted to know then if she had counsel. Ma'am, you are before the court for arraignment. Do you have an attorney to represent? No. Do you wish to apply for appointment of an attorney? Sure. Yes. Yes, sir. Really, really disturbing story. world is a frightening place at times. How do you even protect yourself? That includes, by the way, if you get hurt which is one of the scariest things that can happen, comes out of nowhere. Well, if that's the case, there is something you can do, and that is be prepared with the right legal team. Let me talk to you about our incredible partner and sponsor here on Sidebar, Morgan & Morgan, the largest injury law firm in America. I have to tell you, I know I talk about them a lot, but I really like talking about them because they are all about their clients. From fighting for the compensation their clients deserve, meaning taking cases to trial if it's necessary, and by the way, They have a track record of securing verdicts in the multi-millions to also just making the whole process easy for their clients. No more in-person meetings or countless phone calls. This can all be done from your smartphone, submitting your claim, signing contracts, uploading documents, talking to your whole legal team. The firm has a support team of over 3,000. Seeing if you have a case only takes a few minutes from your smartphone. That's it. Not all law firms are the same, clearly, and Morgan & Morgan is something you should really pay attention to. So if you're injured, you can start by easily submitting a claim at forthepeople.com slash LC sidebar or by dialing pound law, that's pound 529 on your phone. Well, now let's go to this past Monday. So Lucas, wearing shackles and in her orange jail garb, was flanked by two lawyers who answered the judge's questions about scheduling and seemingly needing more time. And I warn you, it is a bit hard to hear the judge. You can hear the attorney pretty well, though. Commonwealth versus Tiffany Lucas, 23 CR 404. Uh, well, strictly speaking, Your Honor, no. Uh, we would request that we pass the case maybe another 60 days for status before setting a trial date, but I understand local practice is to set an arraignment, so I... Uh, well, it is. It's already passed some time. Can you tell me why you need more time before we get the process? 
Well, Your Honor, frankly, there is just a lot of evidence to gather in the case. We received discovery, I think, in early, or, mm, I want to say late March, early April. Uh, we're still going through thousands of documents that we received as part of that, and then we need our own experts to disseminate that uh, you, and interpret. Do you need uh, scientific evidence or evaluations which have not been received? Uh, yes. Well, Your Honor, I think I think we have a good faith basis to believe that we would have reports completed in that 60-day time frame. I think that I think that another 60-day pass to get a court date would be fine, so we can make sure we have everything ready to go. I don't know. Uh, there's some other issues that we're going to take up. That would probably be a wise way to resolve things at this time. Like the defendant awaiting trial would have a trial date, but both sides are asking again at this time to pass it for 60 days. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I don't know how many days exactly this is. That was June 17th at 1 o'clock. I believe so, Your Honor. I pass this to June 17th at 1 o'clock to set for trial. Not for today, Your Honor. To be clear, when the defense is talking about discovery, it's that material that's turned over to them by the prosecution that they need to review in order to prepare the defense. And as you heard, thousands of documents, they need their own experts to go through them. We still don't know, though, what the defense will be or what kind of experts she needs. This wasn't just the defense, though, trying to push for more time. No, prosecutor... Bailey Taylor argued there was a lot to look at. Today, the uh, Commonwealth and the defense agreed to set the case on June 17th to obtain a final trial date, or at least a set trial date that we'll focus on from that point forward. There's more evidence out there that needs to be examined and uh, perhaps collected from both sides. At a December hearing, the judge upheld Lucas' $2 million bond, so she has been locked up since her alleged crimes. Family members allege that they reached out to Child Protective Services about Lucas, but say their concerns weren't investigated seriously. There were allegations of drug use that were thrown out there, too. Now, here on Sidebar, we also spoke with Michelle Rice. This is six-year-old Maurice's stepmother, and she says she wants the death penalty for Lucas, which she is eligible for if found guilty. They were just, they were great little boys. Like, I don't understand how someone, like, just even knowing them could do something like that. She's, she was competent. She, she was very aware of what she did. She knows what she did. She, even the emotions, she shows no emotions. Um, she goes on camera. She has that, that same look is that same look she always has, that, that nasty, just, you know, she's, she's not a person you can really get along with consistently. She's very inconsistent. We want the death penalty. That's, yeah. that's what we want. She deserves to die. Like, Definitely. So for now, we can expect Lucas back in court again this summer, where we may finally learn the actual trial date. That's all we have for you here on Sidebar. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. As always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.